Injuries to the pelvic ring can be life-threatening and require immediate stabilization. In this presentation, the techniques for stabilizing the pelvic ring with the external fixator will be demonstrated. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the clinical indications for external fixation of the pelvic ring, the technique for the insertion of shunt screws in the supraacetabular region and the iliac crest, and the construction of the anterior pelvic external fixator. The clinical indications for this type of fixation are emergency stabilization of unstable pelvic ring injuries, definitive treatment of B-type injuries, and the anterior stabilization of C-type injuries. There are two possible locations for anchoring the shunt screws, the supraacetabular region and the iliac crest. Shunt screw placement at the iliac crest offers easy access but less stability. Shunt screw placement in the supraacetabular region requires a more technically demanding access but offers superior stability. The instruments needed for this exercise are the compact air drive, the quick coupling, the drive adapter with quick coupling for 5 mm shunt screws, and four 175 mm long, 5 mm diameter shunt screws with a thread length of 60 mm. Conventional shunt screws may be used as well. Also needed is the drill sleeve assembly, which includes the handle, the long 6.0, 5.0 threaded drill sleeve, the long 5.0, 3.5 drill sleeve, and the long 3.5 trocar. The universal chuck with T-handle is used for the final advancement of the shunt screws. Large MR safe open adjustable clamps and large MR safe combination clamps will be used for the frame assemblies. Also required are 11 mm diameter carbon fiber rods and 5 mm diameter connecting rods, depending on the frame construction. To tighten the frame assembly, an 11 mm socket wrench and the 11 mm combination wrench are needed. The supraacetabular positioning of the shunt screws is now shown. The pelvis is clamped at the sacrum so that it corresponds to the intraoperative position of the patient. The anatomical landmarks for the supraacetabular positioning of the shunt screws are the superior anterior iliac crest, which is palpable, and the inferior anterior iliac crest, which is rarely palpable. The insertion site for the shunt screws is 4 to 6 centimeters caudal and 3 to 4 centimeters medial of the superior anterior iliac crest that is, just distal of the inferior anterior iliac crest. This insertion point is best found with the template. The shunt screws are angled 10 to 20 degrees cranially and 20 to 30 degrees medially. The drill sleeve assembly is inserted through the incision and placed directly on the bone surface. The trocar is removed. The drill sleeve also is removed. The first shunt screw is inserted through the outer sleeve of the drill sleeve assembly. It's angled 20 to 30 degrees medially and 10 to 20 degrees cranially. The self-drilling shunt screws can be cautiously introduced with the air drive. Care is taken to ensure that there's good purchase in the bone. The air drive and the drill sleeve are removed. The final turns must be completed by hand so the universal chuck with T-handle is mounted. In its correct position, the shunt screw lies deep and firm in the bone. This stability allows considerable forces to be transferred in the ventral as well as the dorsal part of the pelvic ring. On the contralateral side, the second shunt screw is inserted using the same technique. It too is angled 20 to 30 degrees medially and 10 to 20 degrees cranially.
Following the correct insertion of the second shunt screw, the symmetry of their positioning is apparent. The construction of the supraacetabular frame is now demonstrated. An open adjustable clamp is attached to each of the shunt screws. A carbon fiber rod is inserted into each of the open adjustable clamps. The rods are connected with a combination clamp. The clamp nuts are all first tightened by hand. The cannulated socket wrench is used for the provisional tightening of the two open adjustable clamps. Lateral compression is applied to the base of the shunt screws and the pelvis, resulting in a reduction of the symphysis pubis. The reduction is maintained by using the socket wrench to first tighten the combination clamp and then tighten the open adjustable clamps. Tightening is completed with the combination wrench. The frame is now finished and the fixation is secure. The placement of the second pair of supraacetabular shunt screws will now be demonstrated. This pair of shunt screws is placed just proximal to the first pair. These shunt screws are inserted about one centimeter from the first shunt screws, roughly parallel but slightly caudal. The shunt screw is cautiously advanced with the air drive. However, the final insertion must be completed by hand. So the air drive is removed and the universal chuck with T-handle is used. Another screw is added to the contralateral side. Following the insertion of the shunt screws and construction of the single frame, for increased stability a second frame is attached to the second set of shunt screws, so an open adjustable clamp is mounted on each of the shunt screws. A carbon fiber rod is inserted into the open adjustable clamps. The carbon fiber rods are connected with a combination clamp. The clamp nuts are first tightened by hand. The socket wrench is used to provisionally tighten the clamp nuts. Final tightening is completed with the combination wrench. An open adjustable clamp is attached to both the upper and lower carbon fiber rods. The 5 mm connecting rod is used to join the two clamps, thus bridging the upper and lower frames. The clamp nuts are tightened in the usual manner.
Two additional clamps and a connecting rod are attached to the contralateral side in the same way. Positioning of the shunt screws in the iliac crest is now shown. The anterior edge of the superior anterior iliac spine first has to be determined. From the tubercle of the iliac border, which lies about 4 cm dorsal to the superior anterior iliac spine, a strong rim runs obliquely in the ventral direction. However, this direction is not suitable for the anchorage of the shunt screws. Although it's easy to find an insertion point in the broad iliac crest, a secure hold for the shunt screws is difficult to obtain in the thin wall of the ilium. To help determine the direction of the shunt screws in the ilium, the inner and outer surfaces can be marked with K-wires. The first shunt screw must be inserted through the drill sleeve into the solid iliac crest. The self-drilling shunt screws can be cautiously inserted with the air drive. Care is taken to ensure that there is good purchase in the bone. The air drive and the drill sleeve are removed. The final turns must be made by hand, so the universal chuck with T-handle is mounted. The K-wires are repositioned to help visually guide the insertion of the second shunt screw in the same manner as the first. Following introduction of the shunt screw with the air drive and final advancement by the universal chuck with T-handle, the K-wires are removed. Even experienced surgeons find it difficult to place the shunt screws in the best position because partial perforations of the thin ilium may occur in the inner and outer walls. However, perforations are acceptable if the tip of the shunt screw is firmly anchored in the bone. On the opposite side, the shunt screws are inserted into the iliac crest in the same way. The construction of the iliac crest pelvic frame is now demonstrated. An open adjustable clamp is attached to each of the shunt screws. On both sides, a carbon fiber rod is snapped into place and its position is adjusted. All the nuts are tightened, first by hand, then followed by the socket wrench. With the combination wrench used for final tightening, A combination clamp is attached to the end of each carbon fiber rod. Two additional carbon fiber rods are inserted, one into each combination clamp. They are joined together with a third combination clamp. After initial tightening by hand, lateral compression is applied to the base of the shunt screws, thus obtaining a reduction of the symphysis pubis. The reduction is maintained by tightening the combination clamps. Tightening is completed with the combination wrench. This presentation has demonstrated the positioning and insertion of the shunt screws in the supraacetabular region and the iliac crest, and the construction of the anterior pelvic external fixator. Positioning of the shunt screws with the pelvis covered. A plastic bag is placed over the pelvis. The two landmarks, the iliac crest and the superior anterior iliac spine, are palpated. 
The insertion point for the supraacetabular area is 5 to 6 centimeters caudal and 3 centimeters medial, distal to the superior anterior iliac spine. The drill sleeve assembly is inserted down to the entry point. The trocar and drill sleeve are removed. The shunt screw is angled 30 degrees medially and 10 degrees cranially. It's inserted in the usual manner. For insertion in the iliac crest, two K wires are placed for guidance. The shunt screws are introduced as cautiously as possible. Following the insertion of the shunt screws, the K wires are withdrawn. After the covering has been removed, the result can be checked.